Released by Insomniac Games in 2023 on the PlayStation 5, Spider-Man 2 would be a direct sequel to Spider-Man Miles Morales. Directed by Brian Intihar and Ryan Smith and written by a diverse panel, the game would allow utilization of both Spider-Man as well as gameplay segments with a few minor characters in an expanded New York City area. The story only gets larger from here so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, Norman Osborn approaches his son Harry as they stand before a tank storing an unusual specimen as Harry openly speaks about how he is terminally ill with the same disease that claimed his mother and doesn't have long to live. Refusing to let his son go, Norman, who has been hosting the creature, infects Harry with it and stores him in his lab as it bonds and grows inside of him. Eighteen months later, a hunter named Craven seeks a challenge worthy of him as he has shown New York and its many vigilantes and metahumans excited to hunt in these new grounds. Six months pass as Miles approaches Peter for advice on how to sell himself for his college application as he struggles to think of himself separate from his double life as Spider-Man. At Miles' private school, Peter has been hired as a new physics teacher, but on his first day, his class is interrupted by an attack by Sandman. As they both cut class, Mary Jane chimes in to report her new boss of the Daily Bugle is J. Jonah Jameson, not thrilled at the situation. They see Sandman has made a colossal version of himself, destroying sections of the city in his outburst while Peter reveals new exoskeleton limbs he made for his suit as Sandman shouts to be left alone. Thanks to Miles and his electrical powers, they defeat Sandman and capture Marco, though he warns the Spider-Man that soon someone will be coming after them too. While populated buildings were destroyed and people were buried alive under sand dunes, fortunately no one died, though smaller criminals take advantage of the situation as Peter advocates for more gun control while he continues stopping common crimes around the city like stationary speeding vehicles. Meanwhile, Miles investigates a strange crystal that seems to store part of Sandman's memories, though afterwards Miles saves an ungrateful Jameson. Peter gets fired from his job, reminded that New York is an at-will employment state, sharing the news with MJ on her motorcycle, who bemoans how Jameson threatens to fire anyone who doesn't get front-page stories. Peter does chores around May's old house that he now owns, though is overdue on payments. While MJ offers to cover expenses for a bit, Peter politely refuses, but admits he may be taking on too much by himself and needs to figure out his work-life balance. Miles points him to some freelance photography work he can do for a little money, as Peter is simply unable to find anyone willing to pay for science or advanced technology on the level he makes, like handheld 3D printers. They are surprised by a visit from Harry Osborne, who says he's been released from his intense treatment and feels much better, noting MJ's new motorcycle and face model since he last saw her. Taking Peter on a bike ride to their old high school, they break in and enter for nostalgia's sake as Harry reminds Peter of the revolutionary ideas in high school ten years ago, the tough times they went through together that forged their best friendship, and his mother's message of wanting to heal the world. Harry presents Peter with a work ID for a new foundation he is starting, named in memorial after his mother Emily and Aunt May, bringing their dreams to life with Peter as co-founder. Harry invites Peter to his lab as Craven arrives personally in the city with his forces, upset they missed the chance to battle Sandman and so move down their shortlist. Meanwhile, Miles keeps procrastinating with his application to university's music technology program, struggling to write 500 words or less as his mother and city councilwoman delivers the news that she has begun dating again and wants him to meet her boyfriend as he continues to remember his fallen father. Thanks to a wingsuit upgrade, Miles jets through the wind tunnels around the city to cross the water and meet with Peter at the raft as Scorpion as well as Martin Lee, aka Mr. Negative, are being transported out. Seeing his father's killer upsets Miles, but they are interrupted as Craven's forces assault the barge and capsize the ship. Scorpion breaks out, injuring Miles as the hallucinogen from his stinger causes him to see and hear illusions of his dead father. He then sees Mr. Negative at risk of drowning, and though he hesitates, is about to rescue him, but Lee's powers suddenly resonate with Miles' venom powers, catching him off guard as they surge out of control. Craven's forces break Lee out, and as he is freed, calls out Miles, almost letting him just die, and Miles is forced to let him go with Craven as he chooses to save lives instead. Afterwards, Miles is called by his uncle Aaron, who tells him not to be a prisoner to his own thinking and to let go of the past and not pursue revenge, stating he himself has reformed and wants to be a family again. As Miles helps Aaron remove old Prowler tech off the street, he returns home and walks past a Cuban flag hanging inside of his home for some reason with an exaggerated swagger. He slides upstairs and is surprised to see his mother has given Aaron a second chance too, co-signing a lease to let him rent a room in the same building as them, welcoming Aaron closer to their family going forward. Returning to his school for their club fair and to meet with a potential college recruiter, Miles learns about preventative contraception, birth control rights, and new reproductive technologies. 
He soon spots someone left a call hanging and catches that one of the faculty is kidnapped for her past connection to Rand Corporation. Saving her, he is recognized as the official hero of the campus as he continues practicing being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Around school, Miles helps escort a boy to be asked to homecoming by his boyfriend, retrieve a stolen school mascot with riddles based on the city's BIPOC artists, and the drone club gain more exposure. At the same time, Peter finds Sandman's fractured memories coalesce into concern over his daughter Kimia as he learned he was being hunted and felt while no one listened to him as Marco, he forced the city's attention as Sandman, all to make sure his daughter was safe. With that business resolved, Peter takes a tour of the Emily May Foundation Center in which Norman Osborn has spared no expense in building a state-of-the-art facility, including plant memorials for both Emily and May. Harry assures Peter of his own input as well, by diverting his own salary into research projects and hiring a diverse board to keep them focused on their mission to heal the world. Harry shows off a project using drones to kill bee predators that feeds on bees that are pollinating worldwide food crops. He also shows off proton beams being developed for medical technology and introduces him to Dr. Connors, who despite once being the lizard, is also Harry's physician. Peter also passes by research on ultra-efficient electrical batteries for vehicles, crops genetically engineered to adapt to climate change and end world hunger, as well as 3D printed organs better used for transplants. Peter is also amazed they improve Dr. Octavius' research and meets a woman asserting her project dominance on researching fish for eco-friendly roofing material. Though Peter understands the global impact Harry is aiming to make in his mission to heal the world, he is reluctant to join him just yet, as Harry says while undergoing treatment, all he would hear over and over was his mother's voice telling him to save the planet. Peter accepts the position, saying he'll need time to transition out of his other job, as he later helps firefighters on a scene that turns out to be the work of a cult of pyromaniac arsonists. Subduing them, he runs into another masked vigilante in purple named Wraith, who is not afraid to kill, who turns out to be former officer ally Yuri working this case. After helping EMF out with field research that delivers promising results, Peter follows a lead to the hunters, finding they are using cloaking technology to hide in plain sight. He follows a drone with a railgun on it, firing into densely populated buildings, though fortunately no one dies, as Peter gains a new lead and learns about Craven and his extremely well-funded group of hunters. Peter also finds inspiration for a new webline gadget, active research on Mr. Negative's powers, and testing with Scorpion's poison and armor, discovering their next target as Black Cat for some reason. Meanwhile, Scorpion breaks out of his cage, ambushing Craven, who is unfazed by the poison strike, breaking off Scorpion's stinger and stabbing him with it, killing him quickly. Peter realizes Craven is out to hunt everyone on his list, including Felicia, but also knows his ex won't listen to him, asking Miles to warn her in his stead. Meanwhile, Miles is at home, still battling writer's block while thinking about Lee and is glad to distract himself with more work, stretching his legs out for the mission ahead. Miles finds Black Cat was looking into the Wand of Watoom, a sorcery relic that can create portals at will, as he sees her stealing it and using it to evade Craven's hunters that are trying to capture her. Chasing her throughout the city, Miles is now a firm believer in magic, seeing firsthand how the world can be warped, the floor to reality is easily removed, and what he knows about physics doesn't easily apply. Black Cat drops a subway train into a skyscraper, but fortunately no one dies, as Miles asks her to help them stop Craven, but she replies she is more concerned about the girlfriend she is in love with in Paris that's in big trouble because of her. Fortunately, Miles' strong mental focus outside of writing college essays is exactly what she needs to open the correct portal, as she leaves the relic with him with a thank you. Now that he's thinking with portals, Miles thinks to use it to find Mr. Negative, but Wong reclaims it from him first, leaving a non-committal note in its place. Later, Genki tells Miles Mysterio just got released from prison and opened a new attraction on Coney Island, and they think he may be the next target for Craven. Checking things out in person, Miles enters and experiences his dream of being a successful audio engineer, but his trip is interrupted with a vision of Mr. Negative as he fights his way out of the simulation. Escaping, he runs into Peter who is hanging out with Harry and MJ here as well, all playing carnival games just like their old days. They spot Tombstone working as staff here, a reform member of society now, and as they play, Harry seems far stronger than expected. Suddenly, hunters surround Tombstone to capture him, as Peter tries to save as many people as possible while keeping his well-earned hat on. Peter loses track of Harry, but MJ says she can keep them safe with her Silver Sable Stingray pistol. 
Though most of the populated park is blown up with people still trapped inside, fortunately no one dies. Though as Peter is pushed to his limit, Harry steps in to help with powerful black tentacles emerging from his body as he recognizes Peter's voice through the Spider-Man mask. Harry says Dr. Connors described it as a self-learning exosuit, but he is excited they both have superpowers now, though Peter wishes to run some tests first. Harry doesn't seem to have total control of his powers, but hears from his father that Dr. Connors is suddenly missing. Peter begins searching for Tombstone first, navigating around typically awful New York traffic that piles up at every opportunity, but first spots an odd variation of his own Spider-Bot ID coded to Spider-Man 2099. Collecting all of them, Spider-Man is met by an odd bartender named Delilah who takes them all, saying someone called Miguel will have to be faster next time. He also begins to work with Wraith against the Cult of the Flame as they prepare for something called the Crimson Hour, and their leader invites Yuri into an obvious trap. Thanks to a tip from Black Cat returning a favor, they learn Tombstone's location in a refinery, though Harry tags along in his own costume, able to keep up with the Hunters and Spider-Man. While the black suit seems fireproof, Harry now seems vulnerable to certain sounds, but together they still manage to break Tombstone free and get out alive. Shaking hands on a job well done, the suit seems eager to clasp onto Peter as it adopts more of an Agent Venom look. Proud of his friend, Peter continues to help others who also wish to follow in his footsteps in more normal ways, recalling years ago when he first slid over to Jameson as fast as he could to earn a job as a photographer for the Daily Bugle. Meanwhile, Miles is still concerned about Mr. Negative running free while putting off his college essay, though he chooses to follow his mother's advice and support his community by helping stop a gang from stealing instruments from a cultural center museum celebrating highly influential musicians of color who helped originate entire genres from rock to funk to hip-hop. As it turns out, the incident was set up by a greedy rich man who felt entitled to the instruments himself and pulled his donor support to try and shut down the museum. Miles pursues him and the thieves in a high-speed chase throughout the city, explaining his misplaced materialism based on his family's legacy of producing most of the musicians in the museum does not change the fact that the instruments, and their history, belong to the community. Fortunately, members of the community come together to contribute enough to keep the historical exhibit open and everyone cheers for their victory. Seeing more Mysterio attractions around town, Miles finds Beck is actually being held prisoner in his own simulations while his assistants attempt to steal money from rich visitors and frame him as the Fall Guy. Freeing him, Beck thanks Spider-Man, telling him Mysterio will always be a villain, but he's not Mysterio, he's Beck, the man behind the mask, wishing him well. Continuing his role as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Miles helps an old man by listening to him recall living memories of his wife and later listens to his school crush, a deaf up-and-coming artist named Haley, on how she helped other struggling artists turn their graffiti into positive urban art. He also helps an old homeless man release his pigeon friends as his dying wish and helps an old blind lady living by herself struggling against fixed income and a marginalized disenfranchised welfare system that cannot accommodate her disability by reprogramming a hunter robot dog to be her new service animal with AI trained on dog videos from the internet. Miles also takes care of the various hunter bases and their aerial drones, seeing how deep some of their bases really go, learning nearly all of Craven's immediate family destroy themselves in an attempt to surpass him. However, Craven was also trying to seek out his brother already in the city, who was none other than the Chameleon, who was already several steps ahead of his brother and mocks him for being a worse hunter, declaring he will defeat Spider-Man. Finally, Miles takes the time to visit his father's grave, telling him he feels, even if Peter is too busy, he's Spider-Man too, and has shown he can handle everything himself. Harry and Peter get word from MJ investigating Dr. Connors' disappearance, trailing hunters at his house, but she gets stuck in one of their vans, taking out her powerful stun gun as they arrive in an abandoned zoo in Jersey. Thanks to her marvelous training with Silver Sable, MJ is able to defeat Craven's hunters in a single blow, pinpoint them through walls by listening, outsneak the assassins in flats, and withstand direct hits from crossbows laced with tranquilizers meant to take out metahumans. With her astonishing combat skills, Mary Jane proceeds to take down the entire camp of hunters by herself with untold power and precision, all while exhibiting her uncanny mastery of stealth. She finds Craven has already killed the Vulture and the Shocker and sees a captured Dr. Connors chained down in a cage. Though, as she is about to free Dr. Connors, she is caught by Craven, who chuckles and displays he is stronger than even MJ's stun gun while injecting Dr. Connors with a serum that turns him back into the Lizard. Peter and Harry arrive too late as Craven prepares to hunt the Lizard, casually defeating Peter by blocking his blows, stabbing him without Peter noticing, and breaking his knife off in between his ribs. 
This prompts Harry to bear down on Craven by himself in a fury that beats Craven to his knees, though both Craven and Lizardman manage to escape as Harry is called over to a dying Peter. Desperate to save him, Harry's exosuit responds to his feelings, leaving him and entering Peter. As the symbiote quickly envelops Peter, he smoothly transitions into the new skin, which resuscitates and stabilizes him immediately, saving his life. Feeling stronger than he's ever felt before, Black Suit Peter is able to defeat the Hunters almost as easily as MJ's stun gun, impressing Craven looking on. Regrouping, Harry points out without the suit he is at risk with his disease again, but it seems unwilling to leave Peter. Needing Dr. Connors to solve this urgent dilemma, they also need the serum sample on Craven to create an antidote, thinking to track him using the knife blade he left behind. As they investigate, Peter follows Wraith and stops her from killing the flame, but she is frustrated Spider-Man does not see the value in ending one life to save thousands more, especially since the flame is a serial killer training more killers. The flame detonates bombs within the building and gets away, but fortunately no one dies as Yuri easily walks away from the explosion and collapsing debris while scolding Peter on his priorities. Peter follows the trail of clues to Craven's base in a private society club, sneaking in as a waiter, where he learns Craven is suffering from late-stage cancer and takes a mysterious potion that enhances his strength. Fighting one of Craven's strongest and most focused warriors, Peter tails Craven himself to a nearby church, but he is easily taken down even with the black suit. Craven quickly figures out the suit seems to be vulnerable to certain sonic vibrations as Peter snatches away the serum and quickly escapes, not noticing Craven planted a tracker on it. Using their lab's particle accelerator to stabilize an antidote, Harry notes the suit's sensitivity to sound, and despite all the cutting-edge tech built into the facility, a functioning alarm and fire suppression system is not among them. Not long after, the Hunters assault the Foundation, destroying everything as they try to capture Peter, though as Peter fends them off, Oscorp security arrives to secure the perimeter. Norman is the most concerned about Harry as Peter takes the antidote to find Dr. Connors and follows the Hunters to find him. Peter runs into Miles, who is intrigued by the black suit, working with Genki who hacked the Hunter drone, as they all see the lizard has grown larger and more feral thanks to Craven's enhanced serum. Peter aggressively asserts he'll handle things from here, which throws Miles off as Peter finds a fully furnished Oscorp lab in the sewers Connors was using. Learning Norman was having Connors look into other organisms as solutions, he sees the symbiote react strongly to a meteorite fragment. The lizard then attacks Peter, leading him on a chaotic chase throughout the city, causing major collateral damage. Fortunately, no one dies as Black Suit Spider-Man's arm breaks in the battle, though Peter eventually pins down the lizard long enough to inject him with the antidote. When Dr. Connors wakes up his normal self, he is startled by the symbiote, showing Peter a strange rock that the suit quickly reaches for. Upon contact, Peter sees a memory when Norman Osborn and Oscorp first discovered the fallen meteorite, and using the expertise of his double doctorates, Connors decided to stick his unprotected face right next to the unidentified life form. It latched strongly onto his arm, refusing to let him go, and so he lost his arm when they administered lead medicine to free him. Peter is alarmed to learn what he thought was an advanced exosuit is really an alien and Dr. Connors is alarmed that the creature chose Peter, thinking this self-awareness is too dangerous for them to handle. Referring to himself in the plural tense, Peter refuses to let Connors take away the alien and destroy it and returns home, explaining the symbiote to a worried MJ before resting from the mission. MJ is concerned the alien is still bonded to Peter, making him reckless, but spots hunters now invading the house and Peter somehow leaves while sleeping. Using her expert engineering skills, MJ is able to perfectly modify her gun and improves Peter's tech with her bare hands to shoot webs too. Able to take down hunters and their machines faster than even Spider-Man with his alien powers, Kraven's men begin to fear MJ more as all of their training is useless against her particular set of skills. MJ sees Spider-Man is acting like a wild animal and calls in Miles, telling him Peter's suit is really an alien. However, Miles sees Spider-Man cannot discern friend or foe, holds the line as MJ tries to talk Peter out of it, and is captured by Kraven's men as he falls to a poisonous sneak attack. Meanwhile, MJ wipes out on her bike with only a helmet on and walks it off easily, still at peak performance as she dodges a sneak attack from the shadows by Peter. She sees the noise of a jackhammer stuns the alien, using her strength to silence it with a single strike, and is shocked to see Peter has actually been asleep this whole time. She tries tasing him to wake him up, however, all she does is annoy the alien, who speaks to her in a threatening voice and chases her down. Fortunately, her sensational reflexes dodge a point-blank strike, her superior strength holds back its deadly grip, her spectacular speed outpaces him even past obstacles, her amazing aim keeps the monster at bay, and her ultimate stealth evades its keen hearing. 
The next day, Peter wakes up feeling refreshed as Harry stresses it's direly urgent now he gets the suit back, but Peter dismisses this, thinking Norman can come up with another cure for him. Using his symbiote powers to read MJ's new article, he's annoyed MJ wrote about how destructive Spider-Man has been recently. Later, Peter confronts both Harry and MJ, not remembering anything about his rampage last night, as MJ says the suit is dangerous, stun gun at the ready, but Peter mansplains to her how he's the real hero. Nearby, while Norman is still a bit of a scientist himself, he is failing to find a cure for Harry's disease, confiding in Peter he always thought of him as his other son, which adds to Harry's growing anger and frustration. Peter heads out to find Miles as Miles wakes up in another of Craven's bases, beats past its unusual security, and learns Craven seeks a glorious death in battle from a worthy opponent while being led to a prepared arena where he is to face off against Mr. Negative in a fight to the death. Miles unleashes his grief-stricken rage upon Mr. Negative who calls him out for being so immature about his revenge, drawing the Spider-Man into his own web of shadows and forcing him to face his inner demons. Miles battles his main fears of being alone and failing his friends and family but decides he isn't going to hold himself back mentally anymore, blasting away Mr. Negative and defeating him. However, he refuses to kill him, instead helping him to escape and telling him to find the other Spider-Man for him. Mr. Negative leaves Peter right to him, though is easily able to repel the black suit symbiote somehow, telling him Miles saved his life and where he is, mentioning he should be proud of him. Peter arrives in the castle but is caught in a specially made cage, breaking out once he sees Miles in danger too. Craven is enjoying his fight with the black suit Spider-Man but tries to push him even further, knowing Peter is holding back. Miles interrupts and separates them and reminds Peter he doesn't kill like this, fending off Peter while urging him to fight the suit. Miles is better, faster, and stronger than black suit Spider-Man, stunning the symbiote while talking to Peter and helping him find the strength to resist. Determined now, Peter peels off the texture on his suit as Miles catches it in a tube and it slides towards Peter again. Peter thanks Miles for saving him as Miles hands him back the alien and points out Harry still needs it to save his life. However, Peter opts to meet with Dr. Connors to destroy it, thinking Norman will figure something out. Peter apologizes to MJ for how he acted under the influence but runs into Harry insisting they destroy the alien instead. Peter says he doesn't want Harry to lose control like he did the last few days even though Harry had the symbiote under control for months, but Harry refuses to die so easily, striking the container with his cane with a force stronger than the alien, cracking it open. The symbiote breaks out, pushes away Spider-Man, and bonds to Harry again, this time using its collective knowledge and Harry's emotional state to assume a much larger and powerful form, easily tossing aside Peter. Norman and Oscorp security arrive, though try to subdue Harry with non-lethal force in order to just remove the alien. Harry charges through them all as Craven's hunters now join the fray, and Craven himself is pleased with what he sees. Picking up where he left off, Harry easily beats down and defeats Craven, as the hunter thanks Harry for being a worthy opponent who bites his head off, killing him. Harry is a bit surprised at what he just did and the game's UI, but then hears the voice of the symbiote once again assume the voice of his mother Emily, telling him he now has the power to heal the world. Looking on, he sees black tentacles erupt from underground and envelop the entire city, as the symbiote shows him a vision of assimilating the entire globe. As Peter wakes up, he chases Harry, running into venomized victims who swarm him, struggling to beat them without harming the host as he calls in Miles. Miles uses a sound mixing app on his phone to create sonic waves that can work on the alien as he shocks Peter by telling him Craven was killed. They build a weaponized sonic wave device, testing it on symbiote soldiers as they save Miles' mother and Genki, and Miles tells them he's finally let go of the past. Afterwards, Peter meets with Wraith to disarm bombs at a train yard and stop the Crimson Hour. However, the flame tricks them into stopping a runaway train as Peter and Wraith detonate explosives to derail it inside a residential area. Fortunately, no one dies, though Peter is pinned down after barely stopping it. The cult leader reveals he got what he came for, which is a symbiote sample of his own, promising carnage to come as he gets away. Wraith chooses to save Peter by getting into a semi and building up enough speed to ram it into the freight train with enough force to push it aside, yet without damaging either. Fortunately, no one dies, as she says saving Spider-Man here would save the most future lives, adding she'll continue her pursuit of the flame under his other name, Cletus Cassidy. Meanwhile, MJ is reading the comments on her article as Jameson says her hit piece on Spider-Man is editor-worthy material. Peter calls her, warning her to avoid Harry, just as Harry arrives at the house and Peter watches him introduce MJ to 19 inches of venom. Rushing over, Connors calls him, telling him the symbiote channels a collective consciousness, resulting in the hive minds he finds around the city and still has lingering inside of him. 
Arriving home, Venom introduces itself as a dominant mind over Harry as it attempts to spear Peter, but fortunately MJ is quicker than Spider-Man, leaping in front of the blow and takes a direct hit with no damage as Peter is pinned by a falling fridge. However, MJ is venomized, but her avenging ego turns her into a distinct entity called Scream who lashes out at Peter and destroys parts of the suburb as Venom takes his leave. Fortunately, no one dies as an uninhibited scream projects MJ's frustrations at Peter for not validating her, not keeping a steady job, being broke, and being lower priority in his life than his double life as Spider-Man. MJ's indomitable willpower cracks through Scream's control while complaining she is working a job she doesn't like to support a man whose life constantly interrupts hers. Agreeing with her and accepting all of the blame, Peter apologizes for taking her for granted, affirming she is stronger than him in many ways, she is the rock holding together their relationship, and her dreams matter as much as his. As Peter is beaten, MJ regains control long enough for him to make some noise and stun the symbiote long enough for MJ to peel it off of her with her own sheer strength. Back to normal, she quickly calls Jameson to declare she is quitting and tells Peter while she was screamed she glimpsed into the alien hive mind and saw Venom going after an unusual rock. Peter leaves to join Miles at City Hall being taken over by the symbiote but is quickly overwhelmed and defeated by the symbiote's soldiers. Miles is unable to save him either but fortunately Mr. Negative arrives in time to save them both. They see Peter as being re-venomized as the black suit re-emerges, but Lee believes he can save him, working with Miles to enter Peter's mind and mentioning for some reason the alien fears his powers. Within Peter's mind, they observe his fears and frustrations as Mr. Negative confesses that in his obsessive pursuit of revenge against Norman Osborn, he became the very same focus of hate for Miles. Lee thinks to transfer all of his power into the symbiote within Peter in order to neutralize it as Miles says he won't forgive Mr. Negative, but won't hate him anymore either as Mr. Negative accidentally shares some of his power with Miles too, powering him up tremendously against symbiotes. Together, Lee pours all of his energy into Peter, thanking Miles for the second chance, and Miles uses his new powers to fend off a massive horde of symbiote soldiers, all fighting him for control in and out of his mental space. They see May's death hurt Peter the most as Peter now wakes up with Mr. Negative's white energy mixed with Venom cells to form the anti-Venom suit, powered up to defeat Venomized foes. As they win the battle, a bright light washes over Lee as he recalls May's famous quote of, When you help someone, you help everyone, walking away a reformed man. Peter is amazed Miles was able to reform his greatest enemy, something he was never able to do, thinking the city may be better off with Miles as the main Spider-Man. With his new symbiote powers, Peter canvasses the city, removing deadly symbiote nests networked across New York, ruining the stability of everything they corrupt, and relieving the bottomless despair they create. Seeing Oscorp present at the hidden underground lab, Peter hard crashes in to see what Norman Osborn is thinking right now, jumping into this situation. Peter finds Venom taking a strange stone from Dr. Connors, but even with his anti-Venom powers is knocked aside easily as Venom recombines the meteorite fragments and gets away. Connors says Harry and the symbiote are perfectly fused now so there is no saving Harry, but they can still stop the symbiote by killing him, though Norman doesn't recognize Peter's voice, asking Spider-Man to save his son. Black tentacles infest the city thanks to the meteorite as Miles shows off his new suit sponsored by Adidas and Peter now allows Miles to take the lead in a plan to fight Venom and tackle nests erupting around the city. Glimpsing inside one, Miles sees where the meteorite is being kept as well as Haley in trouble. He saves Haley, mustering up the courage to confess to her and ask her on a date as Peter confronts Venom again but is defeated again as Venom insists they are healed and wishes to heal the world together with Peter. Venom reveals where the meteorite is as Miles saves Peter and Peter thinks instead of the Avengers in town, they need MJ's help now to defeat the global alien invasion. Thinking to destroy the meteorite, Peter intends to distract Venom away from it while Miles handles the symbiote soldiers, representing Harry with a green goblin, and MJ takes on assaulting the nest by herself, stealing the rock and using the particle accelerator to destroy it. Peter hands MJ an upgraded stun gun loaded with sonic rounds, allowing her to enter Venom's nest to defeat his horde of venomized minions easily on her own with a single shot. She grabs the meteorite as Peter and Harry fight in the ruins of their old high school where Venom beats Peter again and is alerted to the missing meteorite, growing a pair of wings and chasing MJ on a motorcycle who wipes out again on purpose but walks it off easily. Venom tosses aside a defeated Peter who is too weak to fight but fortunately Miles is strong enough to handle Venom on his own now as MJ loads the meteorite into the particle accelerator. 
Venom hates that Miles has a more prominent role in Peter's life than Harry, as Miles has him eat a sonic grenade, temporarily knocking Harry to his senses as he insists they kill him. Miles prepares a particle accelerator that was pinned down by an unexpected tentacle as Harry fights the symbiote, exposing his chest as Peter uses his symbiote energy to purge Venom from Harry's body. Ready to save the world, MJ holds off dozens of Venomlings as she starts the machine to destroy the meteorite, saving the city and destroying everyone's symbiote except Peter's and Cassidy's. Harry falls limp, but Miles jolts Harry to resuscitate him as they bring him to a hospital and Norman blames Spider-Man for the critical condition he is in. Peter apologizes as Norman lashes out in helpless grief at his son on his deathbed, ordering the deployment of something called the G-Serum immediately. Peter and MJ return home to reflect on recent events as MJ starts a new podcast and Peter decides to continue the Emily May Foundation as a humble startup. As the game ends, Peter tells Miles that despite his new symbiote powers, he is retiring from the mantle of Spider-Man at the ripe old age of 25, and after thinking Miles has grown more in 2 years than Peter has in 10 years, both of them are confident Miles can take over as the ultimate Spider-Man. Peter and MJ kiss to celebrate their new beginning, and elsewhere Norman approaches Dr. Octavius asking to know who the two Spider-Men are. He's upset they ruined his son, and Otto turns to him, pleased to see his pain, and tells him he is writing the final chapter. At the same time, Miles finally writes his college essay, earns a kiss from Haley, and is prepared to meet his mother's boyfriend over dinner, Albert Moon, who brings along his daughter, Cindy. Finally, Peter hears the last message Harry prepared ahead of time, who shows him a gene spice tree remembering Emily and May being planted now. Donning a suit Harry left behind for him, Peter reflects on his life story as a podcast highlights and celebrates the true hero that fought alongside the Spider-Men, repelled the alien invasion, leads the way in journalistic integrity, and shows a normal person can be capable too, Mary Jane Watson. Spider-Man 2 has enjoyed the success of selling over 5 million copies worldwide. The Hunter thanks Mary Jane Watson for being a worthy opponent who bites his head off, killing him. Fortunately, no one dies, 